this year we have the illustrious Mira. I know her personally, I can tell a lot, but I would leave that formal introduction to the road tractors. Yeah. So can I please uh, now uh, request Sharda from Hyderabad itself to uh, introduce our very special uh, speaker for the evening, Ms. Meera Shanoi. Uh, good evening to one and all present over here. Myself, Road Tractor Sharza, President of Road Track Club of Hyderabad itself, along with my fellow Road Tractor, Road Tractor Sri Chandana, President of Road Track Club of Narsara of Pate, are here to introduce you all to the speaker of today. Meera Shanoi is a social entrepreneur and a system changer in the disability space. She is a pioneer in skill of rural, tribal, and now youth with disabilities and linking them to jobs at scale. She was an executive director, EGMM, the first state government skilling machine for Andhra Pradesh government, which she set up from scratch and took it to scale. This mission influenced government of India's skilling policy. She then consulted the World Bank across Southeast Asia. She has written several learning notes for the World Bank on skilling young women for their socio-economic empowerment. Later, she went back to the support of the office of the advisor to Prime Minister for skilling. She set up Youth for Jobs nine years back, which has grown to be the largest organization in South Asia, skilling less educated, and has educated youth with disabilities and linking them to jobs. This work has touched 7.8 million households with the message of ability in disability, youth Youth for Jobs is one-stop shop for 750 plus companies, helping them to begin or strengthen their journey of inclusion. About 28,000 youth with disabilities have been skilled and linked to sustainable livelihoods pan India. This work has won the highest national and international awards like Asia winner for MIT prestigious Future of Work Award, Inclusion Innovation Challenge, and the Global Zero Project Award for Innovations in IT and Employment. The work was captured in a Harvard Business Publication case study recently. She runs Not Just Art, a portal for art with disability. Her inspirational book, Yukon, a Bloomsbury publication, was launched at the world's largest literary festival, Jaipur Literary Festival. The book is in its third edition with a Hindi translation for grassroots reading. Her work is driven by compassion and a belief in the potential of the disabled. She is invited to speak at national and international forums on inclusion and purpose. Thank you. Yeah. May I please ask? Our uh, speaker for the evening, Ms. Meera Shanoi, to begin the evening with her beautiful lecture that we are all waiting for. Good evening. Every year when Mohan organizes this event, it's clear to people like me who did not know Lakshmi that she must have been a very, very, very special person. So today, my talk, which is the 11th memorial lecture, is dedicated to the Lakshmis of India. Let me begin by asking a question. What is common to Lulu on a wheelchair, Kiran, who is visually impaired, and Kameshwari? who cannot speak or hear. Yes, all of them have a disability. All of them are from relatively poor families. But can you notice that all of them are smiling? The reason? They have the unimaginable, a good job and money in their pockets. Unlike most of the other girls with disabilities who are miserable in their villages, families think they are one more mouth to feed, a liability. These three are now an asset to their family. Let me just give you a glimpse of their lives. Kiran is the daughter of a mill owner from Surat who migrated to Bihar. Every time she opened her mouth, she was told to shut up 
because after all she's a girl and on top of that she is blind she came to our training center we put her in a retail job i remember her manager telling us that on days where it poured and most of the other girls didn't turn up kiran was there and she managed the entire floor today on her own she has taken up a job in samsung her father has lost his job and it's her salary and income that runs the entire family she has acquired a new confidence speaks the little english we taught her and the entire equation of the family has moved upside down with this job and economic empowerment lulu is an orphan adopted by her parents but as her mother grew older she was really worried because the rest of the family did not want to look after her lulu came to us and would send a message every day every morning i remember in my mobile saying still no job ma'am still no job and yes companies were not willing to take her because she is severely disabled my team was persistent and we put her in a job which gives her the princely sum of an annual salary of 3 lakhs not just that one of the companies donated her an electronic wheelchair she is completely independent now wheeling herself round the house to the office and her mother blesses us every day saying now she can die in peace we put kameshwari in the google facility center when she was when she had worked there barely for 3 months anna who heads globally the retail in ikea had financed her trainings so anna sms me saying that she would like to meet kameshwari i actually was so nervous that i decided to go to the hotel along with her but i was amazed at the kind of confidence kameshwari had acquired in just 3 months on her job as anna showed her a photo album she asked her all those simple womanly questions like are you married do you have a baby if not why not and then i got the message which i get again and again and again that a job is not just a job in the villages of india still if you are a girl and you are disabled they think it's a curse on the family and hide you in the home they worried that the other sibling may not get married since the community thinks they are useless the families do not educate them so their literacy levels are low in fact we work at a government girls blind school at malakpet in hyderabad i don't know how many of you have been there we teach them english because the school is vernacular we teach them jaws which, which which is the um software so that they can actually know computers it's a talking software which allows them to know all what is there in the computer go around the web and their knowledge improves what the teachers tell us is that the parents do not actually send the kid back to school after the summer holidays or many of them just keep them in school when they're supposed to go back home for the holidays can you imagine what their levels of confidence are we have a music teacher there and they sing so beautifully annamacharya kirtanas we take them for picnics and i'm happy to tell all of you that this rounded education all the girls passed and they went into english medium schools which means better employability but this is not true for the others the low literacy naturally means low employability and many of them just work in the unorganized sector where the work conditions can be very exploitative not that these young girls are not enthusiastic to get skills 
They all want to come out and that's what we do. We give them the 21st century skills of life skills, soft skills, English communication, digital skills. If the community and the family thought she was an ugly caterpillar, today she has transformed into a beautiful butterfly who for the first time has aspiration and dares to dream. I remember so clearly when COVID hit us. When COVID hit us, we had to close all our training centers because of government lockdown. But the youth, as they left our centers, told us, please don't stop your trainings. They knew that their father's and mother's wages would actually fall or be, be meager or not at all. And it was an issue of hunger for them. So we launched our online trainings, our grassroots online trainings with a lot of difficulty. But we were amazed at the number of enrollments. And many, many of these were young women with children, young widows, all of them eager to learn skills and to stand on their own feet. They finished their household chores in the morning, my trainers told us, and enrolled in the afternoon batches. The mothers wondered why the kids were holding this phone for so long, asked our trainer what was going on. And when, we, when they were told that these were job link scaling, the mother blessed them and became our word of mouth ambassadors. What actually keeps us on the path is that when you give a girl with disability a job, the money does not just belong to her. She shares with the entire family. More vulnerable you are, more you think of your parents and your grandparents. And how does she use this youth saving? First, to clear the high debts which the father has taken. She saves some money. She opens a bank account, assets for the house. Sometimes it can just be an entertainment, taking the largest television. Always, always educates the younger sibling because she knows what it is not to be educated. And health outcomes improve for the parents. This is the impact of a girl. And that is why I tell in all my training centers, studies on our work has shown that a job to a young member of a poor family takes the entire family out of poverty in a sustained manner. We struggle hard to make sure at least 30% of these are girls so that we can have this kind of impact. We remain on the path despite challenges because we see this transformation every single day. We work with about 900 companies, but I must tell you the companies don't naturally take these girls or boys. Our mantra is hire these youth because it makes business sense, not out of pity or empathy. And we del deliver a whole range of services to make sure the ecosphere is sensitive before the youth is hired so that the youth is productive. There's accessibility in infrastructure and workplace that the supervisor, supervisors, managers, board members, everyone understands disability. And you know, the best way for anyone to understand is to actually experience the disability. This is the sensitization workshop in IKEA where we help them to experience visually impaired. If you don't have a hand, if you don't have a leg, if you don't have eyes, you see that the world doesn't come to an end. You, in fact, you think of very innovative ways of solving the problem. When we do chess matches between the visually impaired and the non, quite often the visually impaired beat the other and this leaves the other stumped. And they realize that yes, 
factor is ability in disability. The result is that the companies not just hire these youth, but many of them do mentoring programs for us. In Delhi, we have a wonderful high impact program where HSBC mentors a visually impaired youth. At a meeting, the board members were telling me how much of win-win it's for both sides. If our youth who's from the rural area improves his English and self-confidence and learns a lot from the multinational, the multinational employer in turn realizes what it is for a youth to live with such big challenges and yet make something out of the life. He becomes more compassionate, more empathetic and a giver. This is Foxon in Sri City. Their managing di director, Joshua, heard me in a conference. The problems they had was they hire only girls, but still there was attrition, low production, and errors in the packaging line. So I visited the plant with my team and thus began our journey of integrating girls with disabilities there. We scanned the operations of 64 steps in the phone assembly. And you know, Foxconn is the largest assembly of all the phones in the world, the iPhones, the Samsungs, everything is done by them. We chose steps where no hearing or speaking is involved. There were about 40 steps. Then we sensitized all the managers. In three months when they measured, they found productivity had increased by 60% and attendance had gone up by a high 90%. Not surprising that targets of hiring girls with disabilities increased from the levels which they told me initially 2% to 5% to present 10% where just yesterday they said they wanted 200 girls with disabilities. Formerly it used to be only from Andhra, but now they're saying get them from Pan India. So we demonstrate every day with hard data that a job transforms a woman's life and it benefits the company. It's a win-win for both sides. And if this win is measured well and demonstrated that our work with disability has, demonstrated. It helps us, it has helped us in nine years to become the largest in South Asia in this space. What about the women without disability? And I thought I must begin with this cartoon which Anand Mahindra posted on his LinkedIn profile. He said, as I sit and babysit my one-year-old grandson, I realized all the difficulties which women go through in managing the household work and their careers. So please look and enjoy this cartoon. Yes, if you look at the status of women, there are the highs. There's female political participation. Who can forget Indira Gandhi? They have a role in space research in armed forces, fighter pilots, doctors, nurses, engineers. Now there are many, many women startups and government has a plethora of scheme to support them. But look at the lows. The ILO's global wage report of 2018-19 says that the average pay gender gap is the highest among 73 countries. And they're barely many women leaders. In rural areas, there's low literacy and they have no say in economic decisions. What staggered me was the levels of literacy, nutrition and access to healthcare parameters are lower than our neighboring Bangladesh. The region's gender gap is the second biggest after the Middle East and North Africa. As you look at this, you really wonder, are there pathways to pull them out of this vicious cycle in which many of women are in. So internet, digital empowerment is indeed one pathway. And I'm presenting to you a story of Google, which was done by Google called the Internet Sati. Only one in 10 internet users is a woman 
So they asked themselves, can we take up to four? And this is the story. हमारे अम्मी पापा ने ये कहा था कि इंटरनेट सेफ नहीं है इसीलिए महिलाओं को इंटरनेट नहीं यूज़ करना चाहिए मुझे ऐसा लगता था पहले कि ये सब जो इंटरनेट ये सब हस्बैंड लोगों के लिए है हमारे लिए नहीं है क्षेत्र में बालिकाओं को जनरली आठवीं के बाद पेरेंट्स पढ़ाते नहीं हैं। भीलवाड़ा डेरी ने गूगल के साथ मिलकर उन बच्चियों को इंटरनेट जागरूकता अभियान के तहत प्रशिक्षण दिया गया लॉट्स ऑफ विमेन इंटरनेट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम रियली ट्रांसफॉर्म द डेली लाइफ एच डब्ल्यू जी ओ कैंपेन मैंने अटेंड किया था उसके बाद धीरे धीरे मेरी जिज्ञासा इंटरनेट के प्रति बढ़ती जा रही है इंटरनेट ऐसी सीखी मैं डिजाइन जब नई नई डिजाइन न बना के गिराई का न दिखाऊँ तो और हमारे गिराई की बढ़ती है सिलाई भी बढ़ती है While we made huge progress in the number of urban women who are coming online, we are still struggling in terms of the rural women who we can get online. Education loan के बारे में जानकारी निकल सकती है क्या? औरतों में नई उमंग जगी है जो कि कंप्यूटर द्वारा आप पता चलने लगा। उनके पास इतने सारे ढेर सारे सवाल होंगे जिसका जवाब इंटरनेट देगा उनको। पूरे भारत देश में लड़कियां और लेडीज इतनी आगे बढ़ जाएगी कि उसका अंदाजा भी नहीं है। So you see, access to information opens up a whole new world. In another company, Schneider, which also works only with young girls and we put in girls with disabilities, they have very interesting programs to help their women force. They've launched the her second innings program so that married women don't have to be worried about you know the gap which they take place sometimes when they have a child or when they just get married. They have incentives of, for de deserving women candidates. And the vision actually is to have at least 50% women in the entry level jobs and 30% in leadership positions by 2025. Sometimes something so simple as an app to understand your business that can help you structure and grow your small business. I just want to show you Mera business. माझे नाव दीपाली गणेश शिंदे मी धैरीमध्ये राहते गणेश नगरला आणि मी आवळा प्रोडक्ट बनवते दोन वर्ष झाले हा व्यवसाय करते आणि मी पहिले व्यवसाय करतो त्यावेळेस प्रत्येक वेळेला बिलामध्ये लिहावं लागायचं किती माल आणलाय किती खर्च झालाय कोणाला माल दिलाय आता मेरा बेल ऍप यूज करायला लागल्यापासून त्याच्या मोबाईल मध्ये ऍप मध्ये एंट्री केली जाते म्हणजे आता समजा मला एखाद्या गिरायकाने माल मागितला तर लगेच मला एंट्री करता येते लगेच कारण की चुकून आपल्याकडनं राहून जातं की बाबा आपले आपण याला माल दिला होता त्याच्याकडनं माल घेतला होता मानदेशी फाउंडेशन मध्ये आम्हाला या मेरा बेल ऍपचं धनुषी मॅडमने ट्रेनिंग दिलं होतं बाकीच्या महिला उद्योजकांना असं सांगेल की प्रत्येकीने हा ॲप वापरावा जेणेकरून आपल्याला बरेचसे प्रॉब्लेम आपले सॉल्व होतात ॲपमुळे म्हणजे कसा बराचसा वेळ वाचला गेला ॲपमुळे आणि आपल्याला पटकन कळतं की आपल्याला किती प्रॉफिट झालाय प्रत्येक महिलेकडे मोबाईल असतो मग ती एंट्री तुम्ही मोबाईलमध्ये पटकन करू शकता वही आणि पेन घेण्यापेक्षा मोबाईल हा जास्त सोयीस्कर होतो How beautifully she says it. She says, just by pressing a button, patke, she gets knowledge of what her expenditure is and what her profits are. Imagine if we put such technology in the hands of the agarbati makers, the buffaloes, the poultry, vegetable vendors who are 70% of Bharat, what India could be like. In 2004, I'd set up the country's first skilling mission for the government of AP called the EGMM. 
when we went to the field, we found that the training program was full of young men. Where were the girls, we asked, and if they enrolled, they only went to apparel training. Then we began to speak to the self-help group leaders, their mothers, and it was interesting because every mother wants a better life for her girl. And that is how the girls began enrolling into our program to get jobs in retail, BPO, McDonald's, etc. I remember the minister would tell me, saying, Mira, if your program gets more scale, these young girls will not get married. There'll be a problem in the villages. Yes, because when girls become independent, they have their own voice. They know what to spend on, what to save. In fact, it was so funny. One of my field staff showed me how every time we took a hostel block for the girls, a beauty parlor would come next door <laughs> because now these girls realized they had the spending power to do even that. Some of them would get educated. They would leave the job after two years. And then there would be career progression. I met one of them recently, and she was working in one of the televisions in the library. She thanked me. She said, what the job had done to her was something she had not dreamt for. Because of the job, she's married a bank clerk. They have a second hand car. And she's extremely happy expecting her first child. So we realize that when a young woman has economic independence, it's much, much beyond just money in your pocket. There's a material change because with money, you have assets under your control. There's a cognitive change because she understands finance and her financial capabilities go up. There's a relational change because now she has bargaining power in the house with a saving account in her own name. And she's much, much less vulnerable to physical and emotional abuse. And most of all, the woman herself, her self-esteem goes up. She begins to aspire and dream about the future. She has control over her body and her resources and she makes definite choices in her life. In the organization I set up, Youth for Jobs, I too, as a woman, have always dared to dream in a very, very challenging space. In COVID times, I realized that we needed to somehow highlight the effort of these young men and women for the struggles they had undertaken to enroll in our trainings, to attend the job interviews and to get a job. Some of them traveled on truck tops because there were all these various traffic restrictions. They borrowed shoes and shirts from our trainers to get their jobs. So what we did was a coffee table book called COVID-50 Real Life Stories designed by the best of designers and the best of printers. The demand for the book has been so overwhelming from across the world that it's now available as a downloadable link on our website. I would like all of you to download the book and read it for yourself to get inspired by the stories. And yes, if we really want to impact Bharat, remove these divides, we need to make strategic investments. So for the next five years, we are investing in technology, an AI triggered accessible job portal, and the community we are launching, the first grassroots academy, which will make our work uniquely of the disabled by the disabled. Let me end by reminding all of us that there's a world where extraordinary changes like the COVID has created extreme winners and extreme losers too. There's a thriving world. And the other, mostly invisible, is a wilting world. We are just by accident of birth. 
in the better place. So I thought I should end with a simple pledge. Let us all pledge today, as Mahatma Gandhi said, to live more simply so that the poor and the vulnerable can simply live. Thank you. Wonderful, Mira. No words. But uh, you missed out on the art work, just for art. Maybe you could throw some light on that. Then we'll open it for question now. Yeah, I run a portal. There are many, uh, many people with disabilities who can't get jobs because they're severely disabled or the kind of disability which they have. The companies don't recruit them. But I found all of them, their parents would bring a piece of paper to show the tremendous talent they had. And that's why um, I started Not Just Art, which is a portal for these youth with disabilities. They have so much talent. I did the I did a arts award the first year with UNESCO, and um, recently we did a wonderful show to with three of organizations coming together um, with Gethe Institute to have a virtual demonstration of art. Yes, it's uh, it's extremely inspiring to see this talent pool and companies who believe in this journey of inclusion make these investments which really inspire the artists thank you so much for this beautiful inspirational lecture i think this definitely made our evening um i am i i would say that we are now open for q a so if anybody has any questions uh, we can do it by the raise of hands and we can unmute them or if you would want to put it in the chat box even that's okay yeah, Lavanya raised hand. Yeah. Good evening, yes. ma'am. Uh, this is Lavanya. It was wonderful listening to your thoughts and the amazing work that you've been doing uh, of late. Uh, I just have a small query. Uh, whenever we've been speaking about upskilling women, um, tailoring and beautician courses are the only things that, uh, <laughs> Uh, that keep coming back again and again to haunt us. In fact, it's like it's a, it's like a taunt now. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, this year, when uh, uh, Mohan sir said that uh, he wanted to donate a few more machines, I said, what is the relationship between men or, I mean, why women and stitching are so related? Why not other things? Uh, in what way do you think as uh, educated women we can do to encourage more professionals out there? I mean, it's not enough to just have beauticians and tailors. We need more. What can we do or what should we do? I'm an HR and a learning and development specialist uh, myself. So I keep, this keeps coming back to me. Yeah. I think uh, one of the issues which are there is education. So, you know, I think the kind of work which Mohan is doing in ensuring that these girls um, have a career path is nice because generally among the rural poor, if there are two people to finance, always the boy gets educated and the girl gets left behind. Inevitably, the story is the same everywhere, you know. Um, and this low literacy actually results in the kind of jobs which they get are also low. And, um, Sometimes there's a career path blocking because of the lack of literacy. So I think we, in fact, ourselves now really are investing in getting people into higher education so that you can broaden the pipeline of availability of youth who can get into IT and banking and other companies. Um, so I think that's extremely important. Uh, so scholarships, would be you know one natural answer but second is i think now what covid has done and i must really compliment companies companies work in myriads of ways you know with us they're constantly asking saying what can we do what can we do with google we have the leaders in fact um, working with some of our you know less educated youth 
uh, they work with, we have a very large, I think it was a five month program, which we had. Um, so there are, I mean, I'm just mentioning one or two, but I think that if anyone asks me, what can I do? My question is, you know, what can't you do? Okay, the world's your oyster. If you have money, you can do everything. And you ask me, I always tell people, don't ask me, how can I help? Because I take you seriously and will tell you five ways in which you can help, okay? I don't know if I answered you. <laughs> Ravini, I am one of them. She asked me, only I couldn't do it. <laughs> the other way to answer Ravini is a very simple axiom. Your future is where your time goes. You spend time, your future comes there. You spend time, people will come looking for the particular problem to you. This I'm talking about of experience. The first few years, I used to reach out can I help this girl? Can I help that, help that girl? Honestly, today I have reached a stage where people come with requests, internet, word of mouth, from the teachers. And I am now finding it difficult to help each and every student that comes. I want to do it. God willing, we will do it. But the essence is you spend time and you can search for solutions. All the problems. Both. Yeah. Okay, so I'll go ahead and read the questions which are in the chat box. So I think um, Padma has written to us, what are the ways in which we can participate in your programs? Yeah. Uh, Mohan, you can give them my number. Or maybe I'll put it in the chat. Sure. I'll do that. Um, the other question I think is from uh, MSR Murthy. I hi, would like to know how does your team identify the potential to succeed when you identify people? And more importantly, the time you get to decide to invest full-blown training and mentoring. Oh, sorry, could you re repeat it again? Sure. So uh, uh, so he's written, would like to know how does your team identify the potential mm -hmm. to succeed when you identify people? And more importantly, the time you get to decide to invest full-blown training and mentoring. Well, the first is um, we actually don't refuse anyone. We, we believe that it's important that everyone has an option to skill because otherwise we'll probably have empty training centers. <laughs> Everyone is at such a low level, you know, they have no self-esteem. So we just take them all in. However, what happens is that some of them do lag behind. We give everyone an opportunity to interview with three companies. And at the end of it, if you don't, then uh, obviously, you know, we haven't given you a job. What happens, however, is that because we put most in organized sector jobs, these people go back to their village and pick up, you know, a better job than what they did before and improve their skills and, and, and come up. No one loses out of skilling. And hence, um, it's everyone should get enlisted into higher education and skilling. It's extremely important. Okay. So the next question is from Umika. Uh, she says, thank you for the wonderfully informative lecture. Really admire the work you do. I'd like to ask what exactly can small and mid-sized companies do to make their workplaces attractive to people with disabilities? Any concrete steps and suggestions are appreciated. What a wonderful question. And it's extreme high import, impact question. Thanks for asking. So we are now moving into the space, okay? Because after all, if 70% of India is unorganized, it, we cannot but move into the space. So what we are doing is um, we've run pilots. We've, our grassroots academy is going to be exact this way. We are turning everything we know upside down. So all what we do in English will get done in the vernacular language, teaching the MSMEs 
what sensitivity is about, what accessibility is about, what to do when a disabled child is born into a family. And um, simultaneously, we are doing a study on uh, inclusion in, in the MSMEs, which will be an extremely important study. Our partner is the CII in this. So I think this together, you asked me this question um, six months later, and I'll give you, I think, very good suggestions because we would have a mixture of theory and praxis by then. Thank you. Uh, are there any more questions? Because I can't see any more in the chat box. Um, so if we are done with the questions, then I would say thank you, ma'am, for being so patient with us and you know letting us ask all the questions and being so patient mm -hmm. and answering them. Uh, so I would pass it on to Mohan if he has any announcements to make. Yeah, you have seen the work we do at NVLF or at Youth for Jobs. We are open for constructive suggestions, open for probably the first time that I'm saying, uttering, for support. And more importantly, we are open for serious volunteers. Believe me, that's the toughest of all the things to get sincere, committed volunteers. My appeal to all of you is that. And there was a suggestion and a very valid one. I will be approaching each of the participants who have registered and soliciting support for registering for organ donation, please do it. It doesn't cost you anything, but a commitment of a lifetime to save a life or many lives, even though, God forbid, we are not there. It's a very, very special and a small category of privileged people, I would use the word, unfortunate, who suffer from cerebral hemorrhage and that too irreversible. They are the special category of people who can donate organs. But to do that in India, even today, the family has to give a consent. So all what you can do is to talk to each and every one of your family members and friends that this is my desire. 99% your family will uphold your wishes. So I will be approaching all of you. Thank you. Thank you. To follow. Yes, yes. Thanks, Mohan. Sorry, uh, I'm calling you. I should call you follow me. I, I should be saying sorry for calling you Mohan. So well, <laughs> thanks again. Um, so with this, I would request uh, Lasya, Lasya Priya to give the vote of thanks uh, to our eminent speaker for the evening. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and my dear fellow rotor actors from far and wide. I'm Lasya Priya. Priya from Black Club of G. Narayanma Institute of Technology and Sciences. It is indeed a great privilege and I'm really grateful to NV Lakshmi Foundation for giving me this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks this evening for the function held on birth anniversary of a noble soul, Miss NV Lakshmi. As Mohan sir has already said in the very beginning, she has not gone anywhere. She's in our hearts, although unseen and unheard. She can be seen in each and every student of NVLF. She is a great inspiration for all of us. Like her, we too should involve ourselves in activities for the benefit of mankind. And coming to this evening, I take this opportunity to sincerely thank our speaker, Ms. Meera Shanoi, who shared valuable insights with her lecture. We are indeed humbled by your encouraging words. Thank you, ma'am, for gracing this occasion with your real-life stories. I sincerely thank 
all the 14 rotaract clubs across india and bangladesh and vishwavishwani group of institutions for taking the initiative to participate in this program i wish to thank the wonderful audience for your patience enthusiasm and interest thank you once again to miss meera shanoy and all the dignitaries in here for being here on this beautiful evening thank you thanks priya thank you, thank you. Yes.